So good morning, everyone. Unfortunately, this has been a tragic night. We do have 120 people now accounted for, which is very, very good news. Uh, but our unaccounted for number has gone up to 159. In addition, we can tragically report the death count is now four. I want to be very clear about the numbers. Uh, they're very fluid. Uh, we'll continue to update you as, as we have them, but we have confirmed four deaths. The search and rescue team worked throughout the night, and uh, it was a very active scene from above and below. And uh, we also brought heavy machinery onto the site to assist with the operation. And so we are very, very grateful that our president has now authorized FEMA support and we're joined here today by our FEMA representative who can tell you more. Uh, and, uh, and that is going to assist us in our recovery efforts as well to assist the, the families. We have the resources for the families at the Family Reunification Center. We've been actively uh, providing them everything that they need, food, shelter, uh, cash to assist with uh, the, their basic needs and grief counseling obviously a very critical component as we move forward, as people are anxiously waiting for news of their loved ones. Uh, at this time, we have received uh, all of the uh, donations of goods and uh, volunteers that we can handle at this time. Uh, we're very, very grateful for everyone who has contributed, and we will let people know as the need uh, presents. Uh, but we do have two funding sites available for cash donations. Support surfside.org and chesed, C-H-E-S-E-D, two sites that are receiving donations. So as we work tirelessly and stand united, local, municipal, county, state, and now federal support, uh, we are going to uh, work as hard as we can to continue our search and rescue effort. That is our priority. That is where we're focused and protecting our first responders who are on the scene. So thank you everyone, God bless. Y ahora en español puedo decir que eh, desafortunadamente esta noche fue muy difícil. Eh, pudimos decir que tenemos cuatro que han desaparecido, cuatro personas que, que, que se murieron, pero Tenemos también noticias de 120 personas que ya podemos contar que son muy seguras, son seguras, pero el número de que no podemos contar son 159. Pero estos números cambian frecuentemente y vamos a seguir dando noticias uh, lo pronto posible cuando tenemos. Eh, la operación estaba muy activa durante la noche también con um, equipo, eh, eh, no, equipaje, y, y finalmente descubrieron los tres eh, y están ahora uh, tratando de identificar y comunicar con las familias. Y en el centro de reunificación estamos dando todo el apoyo que necesitan las familias, comida, vivienda, dinero para sus necesidades. Y gracias a todos hemos recibido, recibido muchas donaciones y no necesitamos más en, en el momento. Pero si quieren dar donaciones efectivo, tenemos dos sitios, support, uh, surfside.org y chesed, c h e s -E. Vamos a seguir con toda la fuerza que podemos. Eh, están trabajando fuerte. Y también tenemos todo el apoyo de los municipales, el Estado y ahora el gobierno federal, FIMA, que aprobó el presidente ayer. Y estamos aquí ya con un representante de FIMA que puede responder a sus preguntas. Gracias. Ah, voy a decir solamente que pedimos de todos paciencia. Lo más importante en esto, este momento es paciencia y esperanza que estamos siguiendo con búsqueda y rescate. Eso es la prioridad. 
para todos nosotros y estamos unidos con las familias que están esperando. Gracias. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Chief Ray Jadala from the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, Assistant Chief of Operations. Uh, good morning. Uh, rescue operations continue throughout the night. This was uh, augmented with additional uh, USAR members from Florida Task Force One. Uh, to echo the message of uh, our great mayor, uh, we are pulling additional uh, resources from FEMA to uh, assist and to provide relief for some of those individuals. This is coupled with the uh, firefighters already on scene, uh, bringing uh, the total of 130 uh, firefighters uh, through this operation. Um, as you saw that uh, we did have the fire reignite, but it did not slow down our search and rescue operations. Um, however, during our search and rescue operations, uh, we did encounter three uh, uh, victims that were deceased. Uh, they were removed, and as uh, we, she had mentioned, uh, we bring the total to four uh, fatalities. Um, again, search and rescue operations still continue. We have uh, heavy machinery on scene to start pulling some of the superficial uh, metal from above as we start looking for additional voids from uh, above. Uh, again, search and rescue still continues from below as we tunnel, uh, utilizing uh, heavy uh, light machinery. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. To provide Spanish, uh, we're gonna have Public Information Officer Erica Benitez from Miami-Dade Fire. Buenos días. Hoy nuestras operaciones de búsqueda y rescate continúan. Eh, nosotros tenemos equipo adicional eh, trabajando en esta operación. Eh, como ya escucharon, sí encontramos eh, tres personas adicionales que, que han fallecido en, en, en este derrumbe. Eh, nosotros hemos continuado trabajando toda la noche. Eh, tenemos equipos especiales y personal uh, capacitado para continuar con esta operación. Eh, lo que queremos es que sepan que continuamos esperando encontrar eh, vida debajo de los escombros, pero sí sabemos que esta es una operación eh, bastante difícil. En este momento tenemos aproximadamente 130 eh, miembros del Departamento de Bomberos y de Búsqueda y Rescate de Miami-Dade continuando eh, en esta labor. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Erica. Director Alfredo Ramirez from the Miami-Dade Police Department. Morning. First and foremost, our thoughts and prayers to the families of those who lost loved ones. Uh, currently, right now, as it was stated, we have four uh, victims that lost their lives. Our homicide detectives are working with the medical examiner's office right now to identify those victims, and we have victim advocates as well that uh, next of kin notifications will be made. Um, in terms of the scene here, we're here supporting fire rescue with their search and rescue. Uh, scene security is paramount because heavy equipment is arriving and we're going to have a very restrict access to this area. Um, go to Spanish really quick. Eh, estamos rezando por las víctimas. Hemos perdido cuatro personas que han fallecido. Nuestros detectives están trabajando para identificar los víctimas y también avisar a la familia. Eh, estamos manteniendo la área restricta porque tenemos equipo aquí muy fuerte. So vamos a seguir trabajando y ayudando el eh, Fire rescue. Gracias. Thank you, Director. We're going to have Kevin Guthrie. He represents the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Morning, everyone. Kevin Guthrie, Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Uh, overnight, uh, we had a uh, mutual aid request go in uh, that is being handled by the State Fire Marshal's Office uh, for additional uh, urban search and rescue teams. Uh, I know that uh, Florida Task Force 2, which is out of the city of Miami, is going to be the first to help rotate in to uh, help uh, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue here at the site. We have put the additional uh, search and rescue teams throughout the state. There's a total of eight teams throughout the state, so that's an additional six teams that have been put on standby to rotate in as needed at the request of Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. Uh, so that has happened. At 1226 this morning, you heard the uh, Mayor referred to it at 12.26 a.m. this morning. I received the emergency declaration from FEMA. That has happened. That is going to uh, turn on what is referred to as Category A, debris removal, Category B, emergency protective measures, and individual assistance for uh, FEMA, re uh, FEMA reimbursement. We will be providing throughout the day additional details as more FEMA staff roll in on the individual assistance piece, but I think that we should set the expectation now that that will be limited to addresses at 8777 Collins Road. Um, so please just uh, know that that is coming. 
Uh, as I said, FEMA is on the way. The first individual uh, came in about 3 a.m. this morning. Um, that is our state regional coordinator, Paul Williams. He is going to be followed by about 15 additional personnel from FEMA throughout the day. And then we also have additional staff from the Florida Division of Emergency Management coming in throughout the day as well today. Um, the, I would, I'd be remiss if I didn't say the entire team that works in Tallahassee is activated. The men and women there are ready to support as needed. And again, you know, as we've always said at these disasters, FEMA helps federally support a disaster. The state helps manage the disaster, but everything is uh, executed at the local level. So again, federally supported, state managed, locally executed, and that's what we are, we are teaming up here with Miami-Dade County to uh, make sure that that happens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Guthrie. And um, next speaker, we're going to have Mr. Ryan Logan give important information regarding the Red Cross. Good morning. Um, I'm Ryan Logan. I'm the Regional Disaster Officer for the American Red Cross here in South Florida. And we, like these other organizations, were on scene in the early hours of yesterday morning, beginning to provide whatever support we could to those that have been displaced. Uh, yesterday morning, we worked with both the city of Surfside as well as the Miami-Dade County to begin to support the opening and the operation of the reception center and the family reunification center. Um, as well as we have mobilized additional resources, supplies, and most importantly, some of our uh, trained health, mental health and spiritual care workers um, are coming in here locally, but we're also bringing in um, trained experts that have really dealt with this type of situation um, from across the country. Because we really wanna make sure that we're, we're truly providing the necessary support for not only just those that have been directly and indirectly impacted, but the community at, at large. Um, we also have been working with the families that have been displaced to try to secure uh, temporary lodging for them. Um, and we've begun the casework process to really start them to think about just some of the basic next steps that they may need to take moving forward. Um, in addition to that, uh, we know that everybody really wants to help during these times. Um, and that's what makes us the country that we are, uh, but for the Red Cross, we would just say that we have ne the necessary supplies and financial assistance that we need to support these organizations. So we would just encourage that anybody wanted to make any other donation, we had reference to the to the groups that the mayor referenced to to funnel their resources there. Um, and then, most importantly, I think it's important that folks know that like this is a difficult time for everybody whether you're here locally or you're seeing these images 3,000 miles away. So one of the things that we really encourage folks is really take time for yourself. Um, go to our website, redcross.org. We've got a ton of information there just on how folks can really help to manage their own coping with this, as well as just how to have the conversations with children that may be seeing these images, asking a lot of questions. Um, and then we also will be bringing that same level of community support here so that we can actually also focus on the community resilience as we move forward. Thanks. We're going to break into the questions and answers session. I ask you to please raise your hand once you're called upon and then just instruct, um, identify who it is the, the question is referred to, and then we'll move one at a time. We'll try to get to everyone as much as possible. Mayor, if we can. Um, first, thank you for briefing us. This is still a search and rescue operation. Have you seen anything? that leads you to believe there are still people alive there? We will continue search and rescue because we still have hope that we will find people alive. That is exactly why we're continuing and uh, that, that is why we're using our dogs and our sonar and our uh, cameras, everything possible to seek places where there may still be people uh, to be found. What kind of a hold? A, no, I can't uh, confirm that. They're uh, actively involved in search and rescue from both below and from above at this time. Sure. Chief Jadal, uh, can you please talk about the tactics that your teams are using? You mentioned sort of going from above with some artificial metal or something, and then also below. Just to take us through what's happening. So throughout the uh, the night, uh, no different than from when we began operations. So as the heavy machinery comes in, we will begin removing some of the debris from above, uh, some of the light debris. Um, as we place those, tech, uh, those devices to look for voids, we start looking for additional victims. 
we are looking for or we are listening for sounds it's not specifically you know human sounds it could be you know tapping it could be steel uh, you know kind of twisting it could be some of the debris kind of raining down so we concentrate in those areas from below we continue with uh, using uh, light machinery uh, saws uh, uh, jackhammers as we uh, continue to tunnel through um, underneath It's not necessarily tapping, it's just sounds. And what, what I reference uh, to sounds, it could be various things. It could be just uh, steel twisting, it could be uh, uh, debris raining down, but uh, not specifically sounds of tapping or sounds of a uh, human voice. Are there a lot of voice? Channel 4? Yeah, I just want to confirm, Chief, um, if you can, can you talk a little bit more about those sounds that maybe your crews are, are listening for and are they hearing and follow up as well? You still believe that there are people trapped alive under that rubble? We, as the mayor had said, we have hope. And every time that we hear sound, we concentrate in that area. So we send additional teams, utilizing the devices, utilizing uh, K-9, utilizing personnel. So as we continue to hear those sounds, we concentrate in those areas. When was the last time your crews did hear a sound out there? Uh, throughout the night, uh, every night. Uh, okay, or even every still right now, they're hearing Currently, as we, as we continue through the operations, as we hear the various sounds, we, con we deploy those uh, uh, devices including personnel, and we start concentrating on those areas. Last two, sir. So we couple that information with the information that we received from the reunification center, so we utilize that number. So as I had stated yesterday, the entire building, the, the portion that's still standing, was cleared by uh, rescue crews. So at this point now, all that, uh, all resources have been shifted to you know, the, the rubble, uh, including from above and from below. We're going to have the gentleman, the Associated Press, and we're done for the day. There was a national TV report last night that you guys had made contact with somebody with a cell phone in the that, that turned out that's not correct. That that's unfounded. That's Chief, unfounded. Chief, on a personal sure. level, can you talk about the bravery? Can you talk about the bravery of your firefighters who who are going in there not knowing if that rubble could shift, if there could be another collapse? This is the risk that we uh, take. It's the risk versus benefit. Every time we have that belief that there's hope, you know, with personnel that are trapped, we do risk our, our lives. It's you know. I, I just want to speak so. to this as well. It's, it's incredibly moving to be on site with these uh, safety uh, personnel, fire rescue. They are totally, totally motivated to find people. They, uh, they have to be pulled off the shift. That is how motivated they are to continue their efforts. Last, one, last question. Uh, uh, two questions. One, have you got a breakdown of the nationalities of the people who are unaccounted for? And uh, secondly, when was the last time that someone was pulled out of Before, I just want to make another point to this gentleman. This work is being done at extreme risk to these individuals. Uh, debris is falling on them as they do their work. Uh, we have structural engineers on site to assure that uh, they will not be injured, but they, they are proceeding because they are so motivated and they are taking extraordinary risk on the scene every day. Okay. okay. Eh, quiero decir que, que estos hombres y mujeres están los héroes de esta época. Están trabajando eh, en condiciones muy peligrosas, están tomando mucho riesgo y ellos están tan motivados a encontrar personas vivas y están eh, siguiendo sin pensar en su riesgo y nosotros tenemos que parar, eh, que, que sacan de allí para que uh, toman tiempo para descansar, pero ellos están siguiendo con eh, en, energía increíble para eh, hacer su trabajo. ¿Qué no puede decir sobre la investigación, alcaldesa? Están siguiendo search and rescue, búsqueda, búsqueda y rescate, siempre. Alcalde, 